Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're talking about something a little different, a little lens here. This is a lens I uh, I did get sent to me, which is rare that I get stuff sent to me, but I got this lens sent to me from a website called Pergear. They sell a lot of affordable camera gear, and they reached out and asked me if I would uh, take a look at this lens as well as a couple other products, but today's video is about this lens. This is the 50 millimeter F2 by TT Artisan. I feel like I said that wrong. TT Artisan's 50 millimeter F2 lens. I'm gonna focus specifically on video for this. This lens is teeny tiny, as you can see here on my FX6. I'm gonna use the FX6 for video samples today because I do not have a, a step-up ring for ND filters that will fit this 43 millimeter filter thread that's on the front of this. But we're gonna give this a try for video. I'll do a few video samples and let you know what I think of this lens uh, for video. I may do a few photos as well with my a7 IV later on, but this primarily is going to be focused on video. So regarding the build quality of this lens, it's all metal construction. It seems like a really good quality build lens. The uh, aperture ring is in the front. The focus ring is very smooth in the back. The aperture ring is not declicked, which isn't ideal for video, but I mean, honestly, I'm not doing a lot of like changing my aperture during, during video very much. Uh, or at least during a take. Now, one thing I think is interesting is it's got the lens cap. It's like a screw-on lens cap versus the you know normal click-on ones that we normally see. This is a little screw-on lens cap. Not the most convenient for quick on and off, but you know we'll see. We'll see how it works. So overall, I'd say with the build quality of this lens, it's it's got more of like a vintage vibe to it. And I will do some comparisons with this lens side by side with the uh, Zeiss Contacts 50 millimeter f 1.4, as well as Oh, what the heck, we'll do the Nifty 50 from Canon, I'll adapt it to my FX6, and maybe even throw the Helios 58mm uh, on here. A little different focal length, but I think we'll get the idea. And shoot, even if we have time, we'll do the Zeiss 55mm uh, 1.8 for Sony. So, uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and get some sample shots of this. I'll take them inside, take a look at them, and then come back out here and talk to you and tell you what I thought of it. taking a look around the property um, with these three lenses. I did the TT Artisan. I did the Contact Zeiss 50 millimeter 1.4. I shot that one at F2 or higher all the time. And I used the Zeiss 55 millimeter 1.8, but everything at F2. So it was a fair fight between the three lenses. I haven't gone inside and looked at the footage yet. We're gonna go in there and take a look at that now and I'll come back and talk to you. But just initial thoughts. Um, from looking at the screen on my FX6. The TT Artisan was, was very easy to use. It felt very smooth, no problems at all. Uh, the Zeiss, contact Zeiss, was probably my favorite one to use. I feel like what I saw on the screen looked the best on that one. But, you know, the screen can be deceiving on that. And then third, the uh, Sony 55mm Zeiss F1.8 was my least favorite to operate because the focus by wire on this, it's its really difficult to get a repeatable focus. I tried to do some focus breathing tests and it was almost impossible to, to get good repeatable focus with this one. This was my least favorite. Now, if I was doing an interview for autofocus and I did some shots of me so you can kind of get a look at how it renders skin tones and how they look, this one was the best for that. But as far as the three lenses, probably just in using them, 
right now this doesn't say anything about image quality the zeiss contact zeiss 50 millimeter f1.4 and the tt artisans were almost identical i think partially just because of the size of the zeiss it's a little bit easier but for the most part those operated really well for manual lenses i'd say the tt artisan was equal to that in most ways um and this was my least favorite lens the 55 millimeter zeiss now keep in mind the tt artisan lens is under a hundred dollars we're not comparing a fair fight here we're talking a sub 100 dollars lens versus two lenses that are roughly more than triple a thousand dollar lens and a let's say six hundred dollar lens so versus a sub $100 lens. That's something to keep in mind. So what's the verdict on this little guy? Well, I'll tell you now, for $69, this is a pretty good lens. It's, uh, like I said, the build quality is nice. It's it's heavy for as little as it is, but in a good way. Like, it feels solidly built. I don't care for the screw-on lens cap. That's probably the only thing that I, I don't care for, but you could always just buy a normal lens cap. The one thing I noticed as far as image quality, that's a big one. So, you know, I'm comparing this to lenses that are way above the price of $69 for this, but to me, and you'll notice it, I'll show you the clips here, like especially in um, the flaring. So like I just sort of did a flare test on them. This one flared more than the other two lenses by a bunch, but if you'll notice how much blue purple is in the flaring and that translates when you look at like some of the, the shots I did of me, just where I kind of set it on the back of my truck and, and stood there, you'll notice how much cooler this renders it the the white balance was exactly the same on on the camera so i didn't change anything on the camera other than you know if i had to change the nd to keep the exposure as consistent as i possibly could when we're outside here and the sun's changing with regards to what i did for color grading to compare these to keep it fair all i did was a straight color space transform and davinci resolve just transforming these to rec 709 and then made a little bit of adjustment in exposure if needed because it was a little inconsistent out here so I made some curves adjustments, but that is it. I didn't do anything more than that. And you'll notice on this lens that all of the clips have more of a blue tint to it. It renders the colors a little bit cooler. And, you know, sometimes you may like that or dislike that. That's a matter of personal preference. It can easily be remedied by adjusting your white balance or, or changing it in post. It's not such a big difference that you're not going to be able to, to fix it in post, but it does render color a little bit different. Actually, I kind of tend to like my stuff a little cooler sometimes. And I thought on the shots of me, like that I put the camera around right top of the truck there and just sort of stood there. I thought the shots of me, I preferred the way it made my skin look. I felt like the contact Zeiss and the Sony 55 millimeter both made my skin look a little too orange. Just overall using this lens was a pleasure. It was a lot of fun. It's definitely one that I would probably use again. I, I like it a lot and it's $69. I mean, you can't really beat it. This is a good little lens. I think it's it's very similar to the vintage vintage lenses. I think for video, if I wanted to have a 50 millimeter lens, I would probably, if it was gonna be something where I was shooting B-roll, and I'm gonna be manually focusing 95% of the time on B-roll, I would choose this over the Sony 1.8 55 millimeters ice. I would definitely choose this over that because I feel like it uh, it was easier to manually focus with this. And I like having the aperture ring on here. It was just easier to operate than than a thousand dollar Sony lens, which was the most expensive lens I compared this to. Now, oh Jesus, almost died. Almost died. I didn't almost die. It was a bug. But I think this this definitely is pretty good. And I'm gonna look at more of these TT artisan lenses. I noticed that they also make cinema glass and things like that. So whenever companies do that and they offer a cheaper lens like this, it kind of makes you wonder. Do they put like a lot of the same optics and technology in this lens as in their more expensive lenses? And I, I think they did. I'm, I'm pretty pretty impressed with this little lens for $69. Um, better than the Canon Nifty 50 in my opinion uh, when I've used that on other 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 cameras. So this, this is a good lens. So there'll be a link down below to Per Gear. It's nothing for me. They sent this to me. I get to keep it. It's a $69 lens. I'm not throwing away my integrity for $69, but um, and I get nothing if you click that link down there. I don't have an affiliate link or anything like that. It's just uh, for you to go buy it and to show them that, you know, you bought stuff after you watched my video. Maybe they track it, maybe they don't. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you got some value out of this, maybe give it a thumbs up. 
and consider hitting the subscribe button. It's free of charge. There's no obligation. There's no contract to sign. You can unsubscribe anytime you like. So uh, consider doing that. It's the only way you can support me. I don't use affiliate links and uh, I'm going to keep doing it that way. That's just kind of, I enjoyed making these videos and enjoy testing out new gear. So thanks for watching. Thanks for getting to this part and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Bye.